this year, next year, sometime, never. A lonely lass bringing home the kai poos at a floor with a weary sigh and lech, lech she's kunten ever. This year, next year, sometime, never. When will the war be by? Wheel, wounded, missing, deed, is there no news, our lads of all? Are they hail and fair that are hind a wa? Alas, racks doot, for the list to read. Wheel, wounded, missing, deed. And the war was by for twa. The poem, When Will the War Be By, was written by Charles Murray, born and raised in the town of Afford, some 25 miles from Aberdeen. Murray's poem tells of a young girl bringing the cows home from the field where they've been grazing to the byre to be milked. As she walks, she absent-mindedly pulls the petals from a flower, wondering if her loved one is safe and well. She's been worrying about him since he left to fight in the war. Her innocent love for him is overwhelming and she can't stop thinking about him and wondering. She no doubt has a photograph of him, which she keeps secret and looks at whenever she's alone and can secretly steal a glance at the photograph. Her young man worked the land before the outbreak of the war, and like many young men of his generation, he was probably in the Territorial Army. He was probably off joying himself with his friends at summer camp in July 1914, just before the outbreak of the war. Men from the Territorial Force signed up for overseas service. Charles Murray expressed the feeling in his poem, A Sucher War. The corn was turning, herst was near, but long afore the scythes could start, a sucher war gate through the land and stirred it to its benmost heart. Nay yours the blame, but when it came, we could not pass the challenge by. For credit, who are honest name, there could be but the air reply. And burly men for Strath and Glen, and shepherds for the Bachton Hill, will show them all what e'er be far, all Scotland counts for something still. Now, he and his friends were fighting and dying in the fields of France and Flanders. The job the young girl is doing would normally of course be done by a man, the very man she misses so much. But because all the menfolk have joined up and are fighting, women must do many of the jobs normally done by the men. This applied in industry and it applied on the land. She finally reads of his death in the casualty list. Not only is life over for him, but her life too has been irreparably damaged. Wheel wounded, missing, dead. And the war was by for twa. The insatiable appetite of the war for more and more men meant that it became increasingly difficult to provide sufficient manpower to harvest the fields. There were conflicting requirements. More men were needed to fight, while at the same time more labor was required in the fields as pasture land was converted to arable land to improve crop production, to offset 
restricted imports secondary to U-boat activity. The next PowerPoint presentation will show you how women were recruited to work on the land. The Battle of the Somme in 1916 put great pressure on farming communities and not just for the duration of the war because many never returned. And you will see how by 1917 farm labour was provided by women, by prisoners of war and by men who were unfit for active service. While young conscripts, many of whom were farm labourers, were fighting and dying in the muddy fields of Flanders.